Welcome back to another episode of Blunt Talks with Gina, where you get the raw, real, and honest truth, whether you're ready for it or not. So we have Jenna Chittam with us here again today. Last episode, we talked about the trials and tribulations of PrEP, and we went into physical health and how PrEP can take a pretty hard toll on your health physically. So today we're going to look at the mental side of things and really get into how PrEP can affect your mental health and how that can affect your career, your relationships, and everything around you. So Jen, this is probably the best I've ever seen you handle a PrEP. And so I just want to commend you on that. What do you think has been the biggest difference for you this time around? I think the one major difference is just the fact that I've really embraced the lifestyle versus just being a prep. Mm. Um, so I remember in December of 2022, I told you I wanted to prep or that I was getting, I was feeling like I wanted to prep again, but I was uncomfortable in my body, my off season body. And uh, I'd been through a lot, as you know, during the time, but I had gotten an appetite back after going through what I went through and I ate a little bit too much to be quite honest and so I remember you telling like look if you're gonna do this like you you have to be an athlete like you can't let certain life situations send you off the rails Mm -hmm. and although while you're my coach and you were sympathetic of my situation you were also just like hey like if you want to be pro someday like pros aren't pros don't have off seasons right like the off season is for improving it's not for going off the rails and drinking and eating whatever you want (laughs) so I really just worked very hard on instilling that athlete mindset year-round and if you look at my progress pictures from a year ago to now which I am deep in a prep now but even a few months ago, we made a lot of changes since then. I just look like a completely different person, even in my face. And it's not even just because of body fat, because truly I don't weigh that much less than I did when I started my actual prep in July, but I had also gone through those reverse diets and, uh, or the cut, the reverse diet, the diet breaks, all the stuff we implemented over this past year. And I just, I kept things tight and I would tell you if I messed up or if I ate even a hundred calories over, I'd be like, Hey, like this weekend I ate out and I definitely ate over my macros and we would adjust accordingly. So, and that was rare, but I think the main thing is just that I really was like, okay, I'm an athlete. This is how an athlete Mm -hmm. eats, behaves, carries themselves. And I think just the thought alone of I'm an athlete has yeah. changed the way I look. Yeah, how I identify things. is freaking everything. That's one of my favorite teachings from Tony Robbins. He says, the strongest force in the human personality is the need to be consistent with how we define ourselves. So mm-hmm. if we say that we're not a morning person, it's going to be hard to wake up early. If we say we're a procrastinator, it's going to be hard to show up on time. And so if you were not identifying as an athlete, you can be disciplined. You can still act like an athlete if you really, really try, but your natural habits and actions are not going to align with anything but what you identify as. So if mm-hmm. you are seeing yourself as a foodie, a social light, a party girl on your off season, then you're going to find yourself in some muddy water when it's time to prep. So yes. And I identity. was very thankful I was thankful for you being very blunt and honest with me on, Hey, like we've got quite a bit of body fat to lose. My shape was beautiful. I didn't, I didn't hate the way I looked. I was just uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And cause I know the position I need to be in to start a prep. And so I think that's one of my biggest things too, is whenever we do go into my reverse, just having, cause I've reversed multiple times already before prep and, and had Mm -hmm. successes this past year but this one's like the big one, you know, I've got to make sure I nail this reverse for whatever period of time. That way, when we come back to prep, whether it's summer or fall or whenever we hit it again, I'm in the position where I only have to lose five pounds, you know, or whatever the case is, five pounds of body fat. And it it could be two, it could be 10, you know, but not 30. (laughs) Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. And that's what I, I did think... my last two preps. So people don't realize how hard it is to get the last few pounds off. Like there, there are exceptions to the rule for sure. I even have a client that's lost 50 pounds during this prep. There are always exceptions to the rule, but for the majority of people, you really don't want to have to lose more than 20 pounds during a prep. I try to cap mm -hmm. it at 15 for myself because the, you know, the first chunk of weight is, I don't want to say easy, but relatively easy when you compare it to the last five or 10 pounds that you have to lose, you really have mm -hmm. to push. And so even if you're doing, let's say a 16 week prep, it it's not going to be an even lose one pound per week, the whole entire mm -hmm. time you're going to run into plateaus. You're going to run into certain issues. So I find that actually, let's just say it's a 20 week prep for me. That's a more common timeline for myself or if, if not even longer, cause I like to take my time getting into things, but let's say it's a 20 week prep. The first 10 weeks, I might lose 10 pounds and it will take me another 10 weeks to lose another five pounds, to lose five yeah. pounds. That's, That's kind of pound the week. that I've been in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you have to push yourself so much more. Your body does not want to let go of that last bit of fat. You have to take it to the next level. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And another thing too, is knowing when to pull the trigger on refeeds and mm -hmm. pull the trigger on rest days. And because of course in prep, we go hard, hard, hard. And then it's like, okay, the body's tired. It needs a full rest day, no steps, no nothing, which I know for some people they can go, go, go. But I feel like that's something in the past that also was really toxic about myself is I don't think I did it my last prep, but definitely our first prep. Like if you would tell me to rest, I, I wouldn't, like I would still get mm. steps. I would still do, like I would yeah. still be active. And then like, I would still be inflamed. And you'd be like, hey, like, did you rest yesterday? I'm like, well, I, I got steps and like, I went to the gym for a little bit. And you're like, no, like, that's not the point mm -hmm. of that. And so yeah. I think just really trusting your coach too and understanding, because you do let me have a lot of collaborative, you know, feedback with my prep, but I I prefer, I prefer just to do what my coach says to do. But I used to kind of rebel against that. And I think that's something else I've kind of just X'd out is you're like, oh, well, I just need to eat less and I just need to do more cardio and I need to, because that's, while that's true for a certain period of time, if your coach tells you to rest, you need to rest. Or if your yeah. coach tells you, Hey, we're cutting carbs. Don't sneak in an extra, you know, 40 grams of carbs and be like, Oh, I was doing fine. No. Yeah. There's a reason <laughs> you hire. Yeah. There's a reason you hire your coach. And, uh, this is a really big part of what I was thinking about going into this podcast too was just all of the the mental tolls that or the mental toll it can take on you. It mm -hmm. can cloud your judgment. So a lot of competitors will develop body dysmorphia and they'll think, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. They'll be shredded to the bone. They'll be shredded to the bone ready way, way too early, eight weeks out. And they think that they have to keep leaning out because they are not seeing clearly. And they need their coach to be like, yo, you were ready weeks ago, you need to chill. You are peeled. We're, tr we're trying. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of coaches will reverse their athletes into a show, especially at the pro level. And they have to trust their coach when they think that they need to get leaner and their coach is trying to give them more food and they, yeah. you know, not, not freaking out that you're going to gain weight. Or when I'm telling you, Hey, take two. I told, I told Jen, I told you two, two days in a row, take completely off. Don't go to the gym don't do cardio. Don't worry about your steps. And I actually expected you to push back a little bit because in previous preps, you would have been like, are you sure I can go harder? I can push. We don't have time to take rest days. And it was really cool yeah. seeing the transformation this year where you were just like, yes, ma'am. And then you did it and your body was happy and you felt better. You felt rested. And that was that mental reset that you needed because you were, you know, we burn out over and over during prep. And that's what those mm -hmm. refeeds or, or rest days can really help us push through. Yeah, it was incredible to see what rest and more food did or carbs. Because um, I know we kind of kept things in the same calorie range, but we, instead of, you know, 
taking more away you were like hey i actually need you to eat some rice some more rice i need you to double up on this and double up on that and i'm not gonna lie it's a little scary you know because you're working so hard to get everything off but i just looked a million times better and then that's what that's what like following a plan that's what following a coach looks like is like you you're not doing things how you would typically do them. You have a second eye on you. And they're like, hey, I can visibly see these things on your body that you cannot see right now. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. And as or that you can too. see, but you're 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 blocking it out or mm-hmm. you're not accepting it. Or, you know, just like us pushing the show back, I had to really step into a coach's eyes when I was yeah. looking. And I really like did do, I really did do kind of almost like a meditation with it. And I was like, from a coach's perspective, I know I'm not ready for this show. And you're like, okay, let's push it back with like, no big deal. There's shows all year long. You know, this is not, the show is not your mm-hmm. end all be all, you know, you can still compete. Like, it's not that you're not going to compete. We need more time. And so that's another thing you, you do need that set. Like instead of eyes, whether you're collaborating with a coach, whether you're completely letting else someone take the reins, whatever it is, when when that expert is telling you, hey, you need more food or you need less food, just trust. It's, mm-hmm. And it's trial and error, you know, mm-hmm. with prep, you have to try different things to nail that formula. Like all of the pros, I know you have done several different protocols for preps. Like mm-hmm. you guys are pro for a reason. You didn't mm-hmm. stick to just this one singular prep and keep it the same the whole time. There are things yeah. you keep the same. Yeah. But you got to trust the process and be adaptable and try different things. Yeah. And then communicate. That's the the big part is communicating how you're actually feeling with yourself and with your coach. Um, but I, I do want to mm-hmm. get a little bit into some of the specific things that can happen to your mindset or even just your brain in general. So let's start with brain, brain fog. So brain fog, (laughs) I think most people know what brain fog is, but it can, it, when you're in prep, you are intentionally and consciously overtraining and under eating for extended periods of time. And to Mm -hmm. think that you're going to feel great the whole time is unrealistic. Again, there's always exceptions to the rule. And I actually felt great majority of my previous prep, but again, I only had 10 pounds to lose. You know, the more weight you have to lose, the harder you push, the longer you prep, the more effects you're going to see on your mental health, your physical health, et cetera. So brain Mm -hmm. fog, I know I've only seen you experience it a little bit this prep, but just kind of forgetfulness a little bit here and there. What else have you experienced brain fog wise? (laughs) Oh man, you're going to love this one. Um, So... (laughs) yesterday I went to get gas and I was yeah. with a friend of mine. We had, we had gone to the gym and, uh, she was like, do you want to go get your nails done? I was like, yeah, I haven't had them done in a while. Let's see if there's anywhere open before we go home. So we called this salon and they were like, yeah, you guys come in. And so I just drive off and I didn't put the pump up and I drove off with the pump in my car yesterday. Oh, what happened? Was there gas going on the ground so, or was it good? No, it was good. So it turns out the gas pumps are like made to do that. Like it's like a connector and it has like a, like a shock system. So Just like when it pulls out of your car, <laughs> it's yeah. And so I, I got out and I put it on the side and I went straight in the store and I was like, I just pulled the gas pump out with my car and they were like, Oh, it's okay. Like you would be surprised how many times that happens a day. And I was like, Really? I was like, I have never done that in my life. We're you know? seeing that. I've never seen that either. No. And so they were like, oh yeah. And I was like, do you want me to like put it back on there? And they were like, no, we'll go out there and just pop it back on. We'll make sure it's sealed. No worries. Oh like God. they were not worried about it like at all. But I, I drove off and Eric was like, do you just want to go home, my friend? And I was like, yeah. And I kind of got teary eyed because Aww. I am a person that's just like, I'm very much... I keep my life in line, you know? And so uh, she was like, it's okay. Don't worry. It's okay. Like you're just tired. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up not getting our nails. (laughs) Oh my God. But now, now I can laugh about it. But yesterday I laughed about it initially, but I was so embarrassed. Yeah. 
oh my gosh, I was so embarrassed. You might have that moment and, where you're like, what's wrong? What's wrong with me? Am I losing it? Well, that, I told Erica I was scared of myself. Oh. I was like, I don't even want to, I don't even want to drive right now. <laughs> you oh know, but I got home and I was fine. And she was yeah. very just reassuring. She was like, dude, it's okay. You're really tired. You ju- you worked all day. We just worked out for two hours. You haven't yeah. eaten yet. Like since, you know, whatever, three o'clock, like it's time for your next meal. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And there's been a couple of things with work. I missed a, a call, like a group call. And those are my favorite. That's like one of my highlights of my week is just seeing yeah. all of our yeah. clients. Yeah. And so I, I think I messaged our work chat and I was like, did, did I miss the call or somebody said something about the call? You go, Hey, is there a call on for tonight? And it, you texted me on Wednesday. Wednesday. I go, Jen, it was yesterday. It's always on Tuesdays. And then it was that same feeling of just embarrassment. And I kind of had to just work through Our that. Jobs. Yeah. Yeah. It was, that's what it was. My heart just dropped. And so those have been the only two big things. I know the calls like not that big, but I never miss it. I had, even when I was just a client, I never missed those calls unless it was like, I just could not make it be- for some unforeseen circumstance. Yeah, And so yeah. those are the only two major things. And that one just happened yesterday, the yeah. gas bump. But she was like, it's okay. We like hung up and we were having a hurry. And I was yeah. like, I cannot. I said it probably like three times. I was like, I cannot believe I just did that. <laughs> and now I could laugh about it. But I was like, dang, I need to get home and eat my carbs. You know, like I need some fuel. Yeah, your so, brain runs off glucose. So that's yeah. a thing where we have more carbs now, but maybe yes. you're still probably depleted with how much you're exercising, even with a moderate amount of carbs you're still mm-hmm. probably pretty depleted and our brains run off glucose. So that's why we can become forgetful or a lot of people that do low carb diets, whether they're in prep or they're just dieting on low carbs, you can run into brain fog and forgetfulness unless you're on straight mm-hmm. up keto. And that's actually a pretty small amount of people that think they're doing keto or actually in ketosis. But that's aside the point. Um, what I would notice with myself was clumsiness. Like, yeah, I am not clumsy. I am aware of my surroundings. I don't drop things. I don't break things. And during prep, I would just, I would be looking this way and my hands would be over here. Normally I look with what I'm doing and I move my hands, my, my eyes with my hands. And I think it was just getting ahead of myself, not paying attention. I would be spilling things, knocking over drinks, like spilling a drink at a restaurant. I'm like, am I five years old? What's going on right now? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like knocking a whole thing of water all over the table. Um, <clears throat> or I think I left, thank, thank goodness it was an electrical stove. I left the stove on. And at the time I was living with Emily and she was like, hey, did you mean to leave the stove on? And I was like, <gasps> Definitely so not. <laughs> that, yeah, for me, it only happens at the very, very end of prep. And it, I don't even think for me, it's the lack of glucose for my brain because I stay pretty, I stay pretty fueled up. But I think it's just the exhaustion. Just over tiredness, over training. Pure exha- exhaustion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so that's like some of the physical things. And just, I think people can relate whether they've prepped or not prepped. If you've been sleep deprived for several days in a row, you know how you start acting. And mm-hmm. with prep, it could be tricky too, because you, a lot of people will talk themselves into that. They'll convince themselves that they're, they're tired and hungry and they'll tell themselves every day, all day. That's what I did my first prep because I really wasn't aware of any of these different things. I didn't have a coach. I didn't, there wasn't a bunch of podcasts and YouTube videos on prepping back in 2016. It was just becoming more of a popular thing back then, or at least I just Mm -hmm. didn't have access to those resources. I didn't know about them. And so I was really just figuring things out on my own. And I was really stuck in a victim mentality of I'm tired. I'm hungry. I'm tired. I'm hungry. And I suffered every day. I remember going on my Instagram story and just complaining on my story about how hungry and tired I was. And I would tell everybody in my life and everyone knew I was prepping. Everyone knew. And we don't realize how much what the words that we say to ourselves really affect how we feel or our physiology. Um, yeah. yeah. And I've, I've seen you, I've seen you practice the opposite, even on the days where you're sick. You're like, I'm not sick. 
I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sick. Yeah. Like, it's okay. It's okay even to yet, be sick. <laughs> even even yesterday, because I my initial emotion was embarrassment and I expressed that. Mm-hmm. And my friend was like, it's okay. Like you're, you know, you just got done working out. You need to eat. But I could feel myself kind of trying to hit that like a spiral almost. Not that you can't have emotions, because I, mm-hmm. I can but I, I moved through when I got home. I wasn't like, oh, it's because of prep and I'm deprived and I'm tired. And used to, I, I probably would have thought that way. Like, why am I doing this? Like, even in the beginning of January, I remember we had a check-in call where I was so tired. It all hit me at once. And I was standing on my counter and I was like, wh- I was like, why the fuck am I even doing this? Hmm. So like, I've had, I've had moments of on, on prep like this, but it was like really just that one moment. But like you said, with previous preps, it would be like that every day and I wouldn't know how to move through. So mm. yesterday when I felt embarrassed and I felt that initial kind of like victim mentality, I was like, think about the science of it. Like genuinely think about what you're doing, like the outcomes that you're getting from training the way you are, your sleep isn't as good as it normally is, you know? And I was like, it makes sense why you would have a little bit of brain fog, but it's not the end of the world, mm-hmm. you know? And it's like, you're fine. Eat your food drink your water, put on a funny show. Like you're absolutely fine. And I, I had a a great night, you know, I didn't dwell on it, but before I would have been like calling everybody and their mom and been like, you wouldn't believe what I did today. (laughs) Prep is so exhausting, you know? And Mm -hmm. now it's, it's funny to talk about, like, I'm like, oh my gosh, like I genuinely needed to go home and eat and get some rest, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Let the moment be a moment. That's a, one of the themes that we talk about a lot is a lot of times we either have a thought or we have a moment and we grab that thought or we hold on to that moment. We create a story around it and we let it, we let it amplify and develop into something that's completely unnecessary. Or it might be that even one of our lifestyle clients will have a moment where let's say they have a donut and they didn't plan on having the donut and they create the story of unworthiness and failure where they're like, oh, I fell off track. I fell off track again. And I have to ask them, what does that even mean? What does on track versus off track mean to you? Define Mm -hmm. it. And then a lot of times I ask them a series of questions and we come to the conclusion, it's okay to have a donut. You're not off track because you had a donut. Let the moment be its moment. Let the donut be the donut. The moment that you decided to have something that wasn't necessarily planned for but if you don't do that you can let that spiral and then you have more food you feel like you're off track you fell off off the wagon so I might as well go ham because I'm going to get back on track on Monday so let me go ham on these donuts let me have the pizza let me have the alcohol and if you had just let that moment be a moment you wouldn't have gotten to that point yeah and I I almost I try to find different phrases instead of on track, off track. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, it's just your life. You're not, you're not off track because you had a donut, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you're Mm -hmm. not, you're not a bad person. And and I've asked that question before too. Like what is off the rails for you? What is off track for you? And I'm like, does it look like a donut or does it look more like you ate the whole box of donuts? Mm -hmm. You know? And they're like, well, yeah, off the rails would be the whole box. I'm like, so you're fine. You had a donut. (laughs) Mm-hmm. you know <laughs> it's not the okay. end of the world and it's the same the same thing kind of going back to the brain fog thing it's like I'm gonna have little moments like that but if I harm do self-harm by telling us oh see you're just you're just so dumb or you know whatever if I put that in my mind I'm gonna have more instances where I feel dumb you know it's like you you're not that. dumb no. you're not dumb it's okay laugh about it and move on because it is funny yeah (laughs) like truly it is funny um but yeah it's it's we don't have to take life so seriously right even with a prep even in prep taking the experiences with prep and rolling with the punches is is part of being a bodybuilder yeah you know it's like if we wake up every day and gotta prep again that's not any way to live oh gotta be a mom again yeah Got to got to walk my dog again. You have to find you know, excitement yeah, you get and joy to walk your dog. Yeah. Yeah, you get to go to the gym, you get to compete, you get to get all pretty and put your heels on and your suit and you get to 
have the finances to do this. Yeah. You know, this is yeah. competing is a luxury straight it up. Is. It is. It's a privilege and it's a luxury. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're intentionally starving ourselves and complaining about it when a good portion of the world is starving, not out of choice. So if we're going to yeah. intentionally diet, whether that's for competition prep or we're just trying to lose weight, there is no room for complaining. It is a choice, mm -hmm. 100%. So we're we're lucky to even have fucking food, you know? Um, I wanted to switch gears a little bit into a topic that people can probably relate to, and that's getting emotional. And mm. for someone who hasn't prepped, you've been hangry before. You've identified as hangry before. So imagine being what you would define as hangry for four or five, six months straight. <laughs> Yeah. So if, if, and that goes back to the, the victim mentality and complaining. So if you, if you, our words are, are a vibration and we attract more things on the same vibration, right? So if we are constantly mm -hmm. saying that we're hangry and we're irritable and we're tired, then that's going to keep coming into our reality. That's, it's just going to manifest itself even more. And um, there are going to be moments where you do have, let's say you have a moment and you're irritable and, you, and you're reflecting on it and you're asking yourself, why did I just do that? Why did I act like that? And then you recognize, oh, it's just hang like I'm just hangry. I'm just in prep, a little bit irritable, a little bit emotional. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. How can I change how I'm operating from? How can I operate from a different space that's a whole different mm -hmm. line of or thought process than creating that scenario by telling yourself every day that you're hangry it's like the opposite yeah. cause and effect if that makes any sense i also try to think about and which you kind of have to get into this mentality with prep like david Go david goggins you know yeah. like you think about him and all the stuff he's been through or something i always think about is people that like serve our country and they're in really intense crazy hostile situations and they still have to operate a gun mm -hmm. or, or do a whole operation and they're in charge of however many soldiers and they've got to tell these people what to do mm -hmm. you know it's there's always such a larger scale mm -hmm. than what i'm currently going through and yeah. i think i don't know if that makes me feel better because there's larger scales or if it makes me fired up because there's larger scales of just people working under pressure and under severe circumstances oh, you know me up, for sure and and it's like preps not even that severe you know yeah. when you think about it and i know to the to the average just gym goer or lifestyle um they might be like why would you ever want to do that but I genuinely think that everyone should prep at least once in their life. Mm. Um, even if it's just a mock prep and it's just for, you know, whatever, you don't necessarily want to get on stage in front of people. I understand that's not everybody's jam. Um, but I think it builds resilience and strength. And I mean, to put it kind of harshly, like it makes you just like not a bitch. You know, yeah. like you're, you can 100%. handle a lot more shit. You can handle a lot more shit. The things in life that were big before suddenly aren't so big mm -hmm. when you go through a big life change, like a prep. Well, I'm having a lot of my lifestyle clients now just do a 24 hour fast. Mm -hmm. Like prep is months. I'm like, can you just be hungry for, for a day? And there are a lot of benefits to fasting a lot of digestion mm -hmm. benefits. It can help with focus. There's there's so many things that it can improve temporarily or even long term. But to me, and there, there's also drawbacks too, especially as a woman. But to me, it's not everyone should fast because intermittent fasting is the best diet ever. It's like fast for a day, once a week, once every two weeks, maybe even once a month, so that you understand what hunger what hunger actually feels like. Because we live in a society mm -hmm. where everything is instant gratification. And the moment that we feel hunger, we feel like we have to fix that. We feel this wince of hunger and we think, oh my God, I have to eat right now. I, have, I can't feel this way. 
And if it goes 30 mm -hmm. minutes or an hour, then we create the story that I'm hangry. Bitch, you're fine. People go days or weeks without food. You can go one hour or you can go 24 hours. And it also helps people start to differentiate the difference between what's cravings and wanting to eat versus what does actual hunger feel like? Yeah. And boredom. And, yeah, <laughs> um, Just being bored. Yeah. That makes me think about when I was a kid and even, even in my adult years waiting for a restaurant and they tell you it's going to be a 30, 45 minute wait. I don't care about that. That that's one thing that I notice that I don't, I'm like, that's fine. I can wait 30 minutes. But then when I go with other people, they're like, what? That's ridiculous. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know? And, but yeah. I remember being younger and being like, oh no, we can't possibly wait 30 minutes to eat. I'm hungry now. Y you know? Yeah. Like I need to eat now. That's ridiculous. Meanwhile, they've got an entire restaurant full of people that they, they physically can't see you, you know? Yeah. I think too, it just, it puts you in the position to be more aware whenever you have to con like you, you consciously most nights in a prep which i've i've kind of learned to just kind of i don't really fixate on it as much if i am fixating on food i always tell you i'd be mm -hmm. like I, I was food focused this week you know yeah um, but i i have my tools that i used to combat that but back to what i was saying um i just lost it thing um it's it's normal basically to, to to bed hungry most nights during prep yeah that's what it was so I'll go to bed hungry and it's like, you're doing that most nights. Like you're like, I could eat right now and I'm forcing myself to go to sleep, mm -hmm. you know? And I've noticed that it's, it's less and less now. Like I'll, I'm hungry before bed and I'm like, you're supposed to deal. be hungry right now. You're in a fat loss phase, mm -hmm. you know? And then I go to bed. Yeah. So, and before I'd be like, oh, and I'd go and I'd look in the cabinet. I, can't sleep. I would There's make no some egg whites. I would do something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would be like, oh, I just have to eat some egg whites. I have to do something. And now I'm like, you're fine. You it know, is this is, this is part of the process. You're going to be hungry and you're going to get to eat again. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's just a few hours until you get to eat again, <laughs> you know, yeah. but yeah. It's, uh, that's a part of the victim mentality too. So I think that's something a lot of people can learn from whether they've competed before or they're a new competitor or someone who's just trying to diet is catching yourself. First, you have to be aware of your thoughts for this to even take place. Mm -hmm. But when you do become aware of your thoughts and you start listening to those stories that you're telling yourself and the excuses that you're telling yourself, a lot of them can come from a place of, of living in a victim mentality of there's no way I can mm -hmm. sleep with being this hungry. Oh, this sucks so bad. And just uh, complaining. When again, go back to perspective, it's a choice. You are choosing to do this. So you don't have room to complain and it's going to mm -hmm. naturally happen, but catch yourself and change that. Catch yourself and you don't have to be shameful about it. You don't have to be like, oh, I suck. I'm complaining again because that's not going to help either. But just redirect your thoughts to gratitude. What can I be grateful for right mm -hmm. now? What can I be excited for right now? And just redirect. You don't have to fight yeah. anything. Yeah, it's just kind of switching gears. And that brings me into the last segment of our podcast. I wanted to give some of our listeners some actual tools or at least direction on what they can do to really navigate some of the mental trials and tribulations of prep um, in a conducive mm -hmm. way, other than just perspective shifts, because that is a big part of it, right? Is like you're hearing things today. But there's also a lot of things we'll talk about that you'll forget. You might have a light bulb moment and then you forget. So how are you going to remember and what are you going to do to like really engrave some of these thoughts or or different um, perspectives so that you embody it on a mm -hmm. day to day? So like what are some of the things that you've done that have really helped you get to where you are now mentally? Um, so just like mental practices that I do daily. Yeah. What are your practices? Yeah. Yeah. So in the mornings, I always, I keep my phone away unless I'm feeling in a very work productive type mood and I want to edit a reel or I want to get in, go ahead and jump in and talk to clients or something, but I won't just get on my phone for like social media, like scrolling. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've, 
I think you had me implement that. Gosh. I think it's been since like 2020 that I don't get on my phone in the morning. Um, it's yeah. very rare if I do. And so that's the first thing is I just, I leave my phone on the charger. I might like tap my screen to see if there's messages from Silo's teacher or if you have sent me anything or the work right. chat. Sometimes we do need to get back to, uh, you know, people if they have questions. But um, if there's nothing like that on there, I go ahead and I walk into my living room. I bring my mat with me and I sit down and I do a meditation. Mm. And I have gotten off track with that here and there but with prep I know that it it like primes me for my day and so I'll sit and if it, even if it's just 10 minutes I try to make it at least 20 and um, I actually joined Nirvana and so I've been using the breathwork meditations and it's already there for me I have no excuse not to do it it's yeah. I open my Nirvana account I click on it and I start I don't even have to get on YouTube and look yeah. right yeah. and so I do that and I'm also drinking water like I have a, just a Starbucks cup that I keep beside my bed. I fill it up every night. Yeah. yeah. I fill it up every night and then I drink water. First thing in the morning, do my meditation. And then I can start my day from there. I feel good from there. But if I have the time, I'll read, I'll journal. And then I always pick up my book at some point throughout the day. Right now I'm reading You Are the Placebo. I've been taking forever to read that book. I need to finish it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I'll read even if it's just a couple of pages, if that's all I have time for, mm -hmm. just to give myself some sort of time. But um, so I'll do that. And that's the morning. But my other mental health practices are really just being present throughout the day. Right now, one of my intentions that I set for the week is just to be in nature for at least 20 minutes a day, even if that's all the extra time I have. Um, and it's when my son comes home, I always play with him. But yesterday we were outside it was a beautiful day and I just I just sat under the tree and just looked at the tree and looked at the colors and the mm -hmm. you know the different grooves of the wood and that there I have a pecan tree and so I was looking at that um so those are the biggest things I think to do at home and then at the gym mentally sometimes you know I'll listen to music and that's what gets me through a workout but here recently it's been just like frequency music and really getting grounded in what I'm doing and feeling my muscles work and feeling my legs when they walk mm -hmm. and sauna. Uh, sauna is huge for me. Yes, I yeah. do not like to go a day without the sauna. <laughs> um, yeah. But as far as those are kind of like physical things that I do that have really helped me this prep, but yeah. the, the self-talk to the language, I know we already kind of went over that, but instead of I'm super, super tired, um, I'm blessed to be able to do this prep. I'm blessed. To, I'm blessed to be able to be, you know, using my body in this way. Yeah. Um, but those are my biggest ones. Yeah. Those are huge. And I think there's resistance. There was so much resistance for me when I started. So I know that other people can relate, but I was having a really hard time getting into meditation for years. And I would, I would be like, I can't sit still. I can't turn my brain off. And nobody really told me, nobody was really talking about that that's supposed to, it's supposed to be like that. You're human. You can't just flip a switch unless you have been doing this for years and years, or maybe you're a monk. I don't know. But you can't just flip a switch <laughs> where your thought, you stop having thoughts. It's normal for you, for your thoughts to race. It's normal for you to not want to be able to sit still when we live in a culture that's go, go, go nonstop. So it is a discipline. Mm -hmm. Meditation is literally a discipline, especially at first. It's something that will feel uncomfortable. You will find all kinds of excuses of why it's not for you, of why you can't do it, of why it's not working. But if you truly do want to experience some of the the peace literally just fucking being at peace you mm -hmm. have to be okay with those thoughts and when they come just you you're conscious of them you're aware of them don't grab them don't identify with them just redirect them so mm -hmm. that was something that i had to really understand and as soon as i gave myself permission to move around and i gave myself permission to think 
I was like, oh, I could just sit down and put on some music or listen to a guided meditation. Oh, I could do this. And then I got better and better at it over time. And then it was easy. And then I wanted to do it. Now I look forward to meditation. And there are moments mm -hmm. where I have to put practice discipline, where I might be frantic, stressed out, and I'll catch myself. I'll recognize that emotion or that state that I'm operating in. And I'll have to be disciplined in that moment and be like, bitch, sit your ass down and do a 10 minute meditation. You've got 10 minutes. doesn't matter if you're late for something. It doesn't matter if you're 10 minutes late or 20 minutes late, sit your ass down, do a 10 minute meditation, or maybe even a five minute meditation. And mm -hmm. over time, that has probably been the most impactful practice that I've implemented. Um, you know, reading came first, journaling came next, breath work came after that meditation came last and I've, I've found that it's been the most impactful. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I like that you use the word operating because let's say you have an important meeting or you're about to lead our staff meeting and you're feeling that way. And you're like, oh, well, the staff meetings in five minutes, I don't have time versus just sending a message and be like, Hey guys, I'll be on in 10, you know, go ahead and join the zoom because where are you going to operate from? Mm -hmm. in the meeting right or in the gym yeah. or whatever this is just an example scenario but you're stressed yeah. you're not feeling good and you come in the meeting and be like all right guys today's going to be a short meeting blah 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 or you're gonna be like hey guys how are you Wait, what are you up to oh we're doing good we're we just did the dishes what did you just do i just did a 10 minute meditation i was feeling stressed and i feel so much better now very different you know it's like how are, how are you gonna operate yeah yeah yeah. And the, another tip and I, I wanted to, oh yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think it's like anything, like when you start in the gym, when you start tracking macros, when you start drinking water, it's not going to come easy to you. Yeah. Like you said, a meditation, your thoughts race. Literally this morning, I was like, did you pay the water bill? <laughs> yeah. You know, like, yeah. did you send this in Silas backpack? Oh shoot. Mm -hmm. Tex probably needs to use the bathroom right now. Mm -hmm. You know, cause he like rubs on me when I do my meditation and he like sometimes won't leave me alone for a second until I get, yeah. we get real still. I'm like, Oh, he probably needs to use the bathroom. So it's just like, and with the gym, you're like, Oh, I don't have time for that. You know, I, I, I only have an hour extra in the day, but then you go home and watch Netflix for three hours. Mm -hmm. It's just like, how are you going to operate? I really, really like that phrase. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. What space are you going to operate from? And another tip that I have for meditation is to welcome and be okay with any thoughts that come because mm -hmm. we will start thinking about something that we don't want to think about. And then we'll label that as intrusive thoughts, right? Because these thoughts are intruding on our peace, on our happiness, on whatever we're trying to do. But what I've found mm -hmm. is that if we don't take time during the day to reflect and to express those thoughts, to actually work through some of these things, if it keeps coming up over and over and over. And I used to think about that. It would be a situation with like family and I would feel like there's nothing I can do about it. So why do I keep thinking about it? What? Mm -hmm. There's nothing I can do. So stop thinking about it. And I would fight it. And instead there was actually something that I needed to work through. I needed to sit with that. Those thoughts kept coming back to me because they're like, hey, Gina, listen to us. There's something that you need to work through. There's a perspective shift that you need to change. You need to change the way that you're seeing it. Maybe it's conversation that you need to have mm -hmm. with someone else or yourself. There's somewhere where you're not at peace with the situation. And the so so instead of fighting them or labeling them as bad or intrusive, now I welcome them. Whether I'm trying to sleep mm -hmm. at night or whether it's a meditation, if I start thinking about something that I don't want to think about, I will actually welcome it and invite it because I go, oh, what's that? And I kind of more so look at it from a lens of curiosity of why is that there? Yeah. Why is that? Why does that keep coming back? It might be painful. It might be frustrating. There's There's a reason it keeps coming back. You need to sit with it. And you can even sit with it during that meditation. So if it's mm -hmm. something like the water bill or letting your dog out, and those are the, the types of thoughts coming up for you, you can recognize and be like, oh shit, back to the meditation. And just remind yourself that's the mm -hmm. game of meditation is you catch yourself thinking about random shit and then you pull yourself back to your anchor, whether that's the breath or the music or the, the darkness or your stillness or the body. And you just do that over and over until the meditation's over. And sometimes you'll have long bouts of time where you didn't 
your mind didn't stray. But if it's something mm-hmm. like heavy, something maybe family or relationships or financial, and it's truly causing you pain and suffering, maybe welcome those thoughts in and allow yourself to sit with it with the meditation and breathe through it and mm-hmm. ask yourself, what do I need right now? How can I change my perspective? Yeah. How can I be more loving in the situation? You're making new discoveries when you do that. Yeah. And the more you push them out, the more they're going to come back to you, whether it's in the meditation or in the shower or before bed or in the car. I remember I used to, and I, st- I still jam all the time in the car, but sometimes I just ride in silence just to be with myself. Um yeah a car meditation, if you will, (laughs) but I will welcome those thoughts. And it seems like in the car when I'm actually just, I have a scenic view. It just seems to help my mind expand more, but yeah, sometimes some stuff like some tough stuff will come up while I'm meditating or while I'm in the car, even in the gym. Um, I remember going through my breakup in the gym and I would cry before the gym. I would sometimes cry in the gym, but I was still doing the thing that was going to help me feel better. Even Mm -hmm. if you don't feel good, sometimes we will sabotage away from things, you know, like meditation. I know when I am not doing well, quote unquote, I will stop journaling. I will stop meditating. Yep. And then I notice it and I'm like, oh, (laughs) you need to meditate. You need to journal. Like you're, you're straying from your practices. You're sabotaging in a way, Mm -hmm. you know, like you're, and you're still going to grow because we go through cycles different cycles of growth and we can always go back kind of like meditation to our anchor which is our our mental health practices but it's it's you're not failing because you did that you have the awareness whereas before you didn't have the awareness that you were kind of falling out of your good habits you know you're just like I don't know why I feel like this the world sucks somebody needs to help me you know and it's you that has to help you dude you know it's crazy well, you just reminded me of something that I haven't thought about in a long time, but I noticed this was a pattern in previous relationships where I would be doing all of the work. I would doing all of the, be doing all the personal development work, the reading, the journaling, the meditation. And I picked it up on one of my last relationships where I had, once I started to recognize that I wasn't dating the right person or I wasn't in the right relationship anymore. Maybe they were right for me for a period of time, but the relationship was no longer serving me. I stopped journaling and I didn't do it consciously. I just kind of fell out of it, fell off the wagon, so to speak, fell off track. And I asked myself, why have I been avoiding journaling? Why have I been avoiding meditation? And it's because I didn't want to face myself. I I couldn't lie to myself because when I journal, I'm not going to sit there and lie to myself. You know, I can, I can try to redirect my thoughts and whatnot, but it's pretty hard to just lie to yourself straight up when you're in a meditation, when you're journaling and um, when you're present, it's easy to go through life and not think about it or avoid avoidance right? But I didn't want to face myself and I didn't want to admit the reality that I needed to walk away. And so I just avoided myself. And once I recognized that pattern, I was like, all right, now I'm aware of it. Now I understand what's going on and that's never going to happen again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely go through um, periods like that too. And I, I think that's what happened to me at the beginning of this month was just, you know, I was avoiding the fact that I was taking like nibbles of Silo's food. And I, and I told you about it in the check-in, but it was, I was avoiding talking to you about it. I wasn't journaling. I wasn't meditating because I knew what I was doing was wrong. Even if it wasn't detrimental to my fat loss or whatever, like it wasn't enough to cause harm. It was my integrity was being harmed. You weren't honoring yourself. Yeah. And so when I finally told you about it and I was relieved and you were like, okay, well, what else is going on in your life right now? That's like, I know, I know you're hungry. I know you're tired at times, but you're, you're, this isn't you, this is not how you act. So what's going on? And it was deeper rooted stressors that we kind of had to, you were like, have you been meditating? And I was like, no, have you been journaling? No. 
you were like, you need to figure out what the cause is. As you can't just say it's because you're in prep and you're hungry because that's not your character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's like, how, yeah. how have you been dieting since July and you've made all this progress and done so well, but all of a sudden you just can't stick to your, or not that I wasn't sticking to my diet, but that I was nibbling, you know, the new behavior. It's like, I was, I was self-sabotaging my prep because I had things going on in my personal life that I was ignoring. <laughs> so yeah. it's so much more, it's so much more than meets the eye life in general. And, but you add a prep on top of that, it really does bring things to the surface it because exposes, this is your shit. I was like, why? Cause I, you know, I know that I can't just go get drunk all the time. I know I can't do all, you know, these certain things, which I don't want to get drunk, but you know what I mean? It's like, that's considered normal if you're like you know you get you work all week you work your nine to five you and you and the girls go out on a friday night and have margaritas to drown your week your sorrows you know it's like with prep you're going to the gym all week you're doing all these healthy things you're like oh this is good this is good but then when something happens you kind of sabotage that and you're like why am i doing this like i'm working so hard towards this why would i want to do this And you have to keep asking that, like ask that in your meditation too. If you have a thought coming up, that's like really uncomfortable for you. Why am I thinking about this? Why is the situation bothering me? And dig deeper into it. Like Gina was saying, that's sometimes what the meditation is for. Yes, you want to quiet the mind and you want to have peace and you want to relax. But if you got stuff to work through, that subconscious mind, your higher self was not going to leave you alone until you work through it. No, they're not. It's going to come out in other ways, like the nibbles or alcohol or yeah, whatever else it is that you could self-sabotage with. Yeah. And to even simplify that too, because that's, that's a deeper layer, but to scratch on yeah. the, the surface layer, we use food as a coping mechanism, right? And so mm. if you are using food as a coping mechanism, um, that's a sign that you don't have other practices in, in place. You don't have systems in place to manage your stress, to regulate mm-hmm. your system. And so now that we do have that, you do have your, your systems in place. You have your journaling, meditation, reading, breath work, sitting outside, all of these different things. If you stop practicing them, it makes sense that you revert back to your old ways of regulating your nervous system which is food. Because when you eat, it actually does lower your cortisol levels. You get some serotonin, you get a little little dopamine. It literally does regulate your nervous system. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason to beat ourselves up about that. It is a scientific instinct for us to do, to to eat, eat food, eat when we're hungry, eat for survival, but also eat to regulate our nervous system. So we have to consciously and intentionally decide we're going to do something else instead. We're going to find better Mm -hmm. and more conducive ways to improve our health and keep us calm and relaxed and happy. And if we start straying off that path, ask yourself, have I been doing my practices? Hmm. Probably not. There's a big difference in, okay, it's the end of the week. I want to have a sweet treat. I'm going to call a girlfriend we're gonna go to get Cinnabon or crumble cookie or we're gonna have you know a girl's day or whatever and we're gonna go get cookies versus Brad just broke up with me and I'm gonna go get a box of crumble cookies and stuff my face (laughs) you know um which to be honest with you I I have binged on food before oh yeah because of emotions like I'm not even gonna lie I've I've eaten I've eaten tons of desserts and or like, you know, go to McDonald's or like Bueno or somewhere and just get like a bunch of food and just pig out, you know, because you like had a bad day or your emotions are getting the best of you. I couldn't tell you the last time I did that now that I have the practices, but yeah, it's, it's a very, um, it's an unconscious way of subsiding pain. That's what I was about to say is that's unconscious and it's victim mentality. Because if you're Mm -hmm. conscious and you can actually in real time be aware of your thoughts and and emotions and work through them and redirect them, then you're not going to fall into that autopilot victim mentality. 
I had a bad day. I'm sad. I deserve this. I deserve the food. Yeah. I deserve to feel good no matter what that looks like, no matter what the repercussions are. You can't consciously mm -hmm. make that decision and and really be okay with it. There's there's yeah. a whole element that's missing there. So yeah, I think that's that's huge. Um, I think it definitely comes full circle with with the whole podcast of just you know being having these systems in place so your your mental health doesn't suffer because it's it's a slippery slope when you mm -hmm. start even with the nibbles you know i i was hiding from you which i never do with anything with business with prep with friendship if there's i mean and you you can see it all over my face anyway what it doesn't matter you can be like what's going on you know, know you. i've been your client for six years you know if i've you can all you could probably almost guess what happened before yeah. i even told you you know yeah. but if some people if you're starting with a coach and you don't know them and they don't know you and they don't they don't know why you're not dropping any body fat they don't know why you're spiraling down emotionally um you know, you have to be open and vulnerable and honest. And I think that's something too, that people don't understand is when they decide to prep mm -hmm. that it's so much more than meets the eye. It's not just <laughs> a physical goal. It's you have to have the mentality to do this type of thing and know that it doesn't matter how tough you are. Like prep will, prep will whoop your ass. <laughs> it, will, <laughs> it will break you. It will break you in some way that you need to be broken and and I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that in the best way possible. Mm -hmm. um, it'll it'll call you out. It will call you out. And yeah. you have to have those mental health practices to lean back on to know you're doing well. You are doing good. And in order to stay the course and stay consistent, because you're not, you don't have those quick fixes in prep. You can just go get a crumble cookie. Not that that's the, health, the healthy option to go do anyway, but there's nothing wrong with getting a cookie if you're not in prep. But you know what I'm saying? Like you don't have the option to just go binge drink or go get a cookie or that's, that doesn't align with an athlete or prep. You have to face the music when you're going through something. Yeah. And so going into a prep, knowing that I think is going to be game changer because a lot of people go into prep, not knowing that, not knowing how it's going to expose you, amplify things that are already there and and really surface some <sighs> deep seated pain trauma issues even relationships which is something we're going to be talking about next and yeah so if you don't have anything to regulate your nervous system to calm your mind and your body you don't have your practices and now you don't have any substances to turn to you're left with either shopping and you're wondering why all of your money is being spent on Amazon and your new shopping addiction <laughs> that you're in denial of, or you're spiraling into this really dark place and you don't know why or how to pull yourself out. So mm -hmm. I think, I think these things need to be talked about more and hopefully we brought some light to some of the things to be prepared for and mm -hmm. some ways that you can I would say start start implementing these practices now, whether you plan on competing or whether you're in prep already, it, there's never a wrong time, but the sooner the better, in my opinion. And um, yeah, is there anything else that you would like to add, Jen, or think that our listeners need to know? I think that there's a lot of people that are going to benefit from this. Mm -hmm. I know even just me talking about it with you, I benefited from it, but no, I think we covered a lot and I'm excited for, for the relationship one for sure, because uh, we definitely have some doozies there. <laughs> We're going to go in. We're going to go hard in the paint. So you guys make sure you listen to our previous episode. We talked about the physical trials and tribulations of prep and Today, we talked to the, about the mental. We're also going to go into financial and relationships. The next one is going to be relationships because that one's very, very fun. And both of us have experienced um, a metric fuck ton of, uh, let's just say it was a shit show for both of us at, at one point. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're excited to go into that. So thank you guys so much for listening. We will catch you on the next episode.